Kevin, there seems to be uh, a theme um, in some circles of, of this idea that justification is sort of the, the power source for sanctification. <laughs> And it's this idea that um, we sort of go to our justification, which is precious, and we're grateful mm -hmm. for it, and uh, it, it's priceless that we have been justified in Christ. But some see that as essentially the, the power source for sanctification. So you go back to justification, you hit refresh, or uh, you, you start out from there, and then you go along as long as you can in sanctification until you sort of stall out. And then when you stall out, you return to justification. And so justification becomes sort of this, this power source for, the, for sanctification. And no doubt, justification mm -hmm. and gratitude for justification plays a role in the Christian life and in sanctification. But that model of using justification as the essentially the main or only source of, of sanctifying power, well, give us your thoughts on that. Yeah. There's no danger in running back to our justification a thousand times a day. There's no danger in going back there too much. The danger is that we wouldn't go anywhere else because justification tells us our identity as forgiven, righteous sinners in Christ, which is precious and is, and is one of the ways in which God moves us and motivates us to be holy. Here's, here's who you are. I would say that's maybe more union with Christ, but certainly justification. You're, you're forgiven, therefore, what people ought you to be in Christ. But if that's the only power source, as you say, or the only mechanism, then I think we're missing out on so many other scriptural realities. So all of the, the future-oriented promises of what God will do, all of the exhortations, all of the, the threats even, the examples that are set, the, the, the rightness of commands, all of these, the, the fact that Christ is returning and could come soon, I mean, that's one of the main motivations. Mm -hmm. When, when I just wrote about this in the blog, when Augustine is converted, when pick up and read, and he opens to Romans 13, the end of that chapter, and it's about licentiousness and how the hour of darkness has passed and, and Christ could soon be coming. Therefore, here's how you ought to live. And he's cut to the core and sees the wretchedness of his life. Now, was that bringing to light justification? Well, I mean, it goes back there. Mm -hmm. But even, even if we say it all goes back there somehow, uh, okay, it, it all goes up to glory, it all goes back to just, I mean, the, the whole Bible's connected in a lot of different ways, but I think we're flattening Scripture. We're not using all of the weapons at our disposal. We're not, we're not taking all of the medicines for our motivation. If we, if we only say, look, Tony, your deepest problem at, at this moment and where, we, where we're going to go is to justification, your refusal to believe that you're accepted. Mm -hmm. In a way, I think I remember uh, David Pollison talking about this. So I don't want to, I want to make sure I get it right, but you know, it, it sort of can be a replacement if it's clumsily done for the old kind of needs theory mm -hmm. that you find in, in pop psychology. You have a need to be loved or you have a need for this. And, and so if it, if it relates to people, your, your, your need is always you know, growing out of are you accepted or not. I remember Paulson saying, that those need theories didn't work with me because I felt loved. I was just lazy. I mean, that, that was my functioning Savior or God. So there's no danger in going to justification, applying justification, celebrating justification. But as we preach to people, as we counsel people, as we counsel our own souls, we just have to be aware of the multiplicity of resources that Scripture gives for understanding the human condition in our souls.